Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how you can use the formula configuration option that exists on many of the Spark controls to dynamically calculate values at runtime. If you'd like to learn more about formulas or how the controls use the formulas, you can go to our support site at support.salientprocess.com forward slash spark dash UI dash controls where you can see a list of all the controls and then you can see articles and JavaScript documentation about each control that will explain the methods and the configuration options available with each control. Also, you can go to our knowledge base which has articles on each of the controls and you can look specifically at the formulas article that will explain how the formulas work within the configuration option. If I return back to the process designer, I'll run the service to show how the formulas calculate dynamically. At the top of the page, you'll notice that we have two separate input fields. We have one for one value and another for another. If I add the two together, the total should appear here, as well as have a running grand total here. If I add another set of values, now we have each row's individual total here, and then a grand total in the bottom right. We will now look at the coach view to see how we can create this type of interface. If we dive into the coach view, you'll see that the outside layout is a vertical layout and within it has a nested horizontal layout with two decimal controls, a button to add them together, the table which contains three decimals, and then an output text that has the total that shows at the very bottom. For our variables, we have one business data object that is defined. It is called formula value list and it is a list of type formula values. This is a custom data object that was created for this demo. It has three separate decimal values within it. One for both of the input values and then the last one for a total inside of the row. Within the layout of our formula coach view, we have a vertical layout on the outside. Nested within that we have a horizontal layout with two decimal controls a button underneath that, a table with three decimal controls, and then a horizontal layout with an output text. The reason why we nest the output text inside of the horizontal layout is because this is the way we can have the output text shown on the right side of the screen. Before adding the two input values into the table, we first must configure the input decimal controls. We must change the control ID from the default to input one for the first and then input 2 for the second. To alter the display decimal value, you go to the configuration option and then to the behavior dropdown. Within the behavior dropdown, you have an assortment of options to alter the decimal. We can alter the way the default placeholder text shows. In this case, we have 0, 0.00. What character we use to separate the thousands place what character we use to separate the decimal place, and then finally, how many decimal places we want to show. In this case, we have two. We can set up the same configuration options within the second input decimal control as well. Before adding to the table, we need to bind the table to the formula list data object that we passed in through the variables. And we need to bind each of the inputs here to the value 1 of the formula value list object and then value 2 of the formula list object and finally the total of the formula list object. Also we need to define the control IDs for each one of these so we have total for the total, value 2 for the second and then value 1 for the first. To add the two inputs into the table we go to the on click event of the button control. Within the on click event, there is JavaScript defined. We run the append element method on the formula value table. This is the control ID. And we pass in a JavaScript object, which is defined here. What we pass in is value 1, which is the name of the parameter 
of the value formulas list object and is bound to this decimal control. And then we bind the second, which is the binding for the second decimal output control here. And we pass in the input of the first decimal here and then the second of the second input here. If you'd like to learn more about how to write this type of method, you can look at our articles or our JavaScript documentation on the support site. You can go down to the table control and then go to the JavaScript documentation and then within here you can look at the specific method that you would like to perform. In this case we're using the append element method which is shown here and it will describe to you the syntax to use and how to properly use it. If we return back to the process designer, we can now see how this total column is calculated for the first two values within the row. By going to the formula configuration option, we can see there is simple syntax to achieve this. The at sign here just references the control ID's value. And then the equal sign means that we are talking about this specific row. So in this case, we are summing this specific row's value, which is this one, and then this specific row's value 2, which is this one, and add them together. This will give us the value that is shown in the total. If you need more information about how to write this syntax, you can always look at our formula article within our support site. The last formula we're going to look at is the formula of the grand total, which is the sum of all of the total columns. If we go to the formula configuration option, you can see that this word sum has a parenthesis, and then within it we have the control ID for the table, and then the control ID for the total column. Afterwards, we have this asterisk. This asterisk is referring to all of the total column rows within the formula value table. With this simple keyword, we can sum all of these values in very short amount of code. To have this total shown on the right side of the page, within the horizontal layout appearance option, we simply just move the horizontal alignment from the default justified to the right. This concludes our demo. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.